Hi, everybody, and welcome to Oracle Database World. My name is Jared Fensel, and today I talk to you about how you can make your application development simple. Oracle offers the only complete database that brings you all the technologies that you need to build modern apps and analytics in one database technology so that you don't have to spin up different technologies just because you want to apply different processing to your data. What I would like to share with you today is five additional simple key ingredients to help you make your application development process even simpler. First is to leverage built-in functionality. Rather than building algorithms yourself, leverage what you already got so that you can build applications faster without having to write more code. Second is use tooling. When you use tooling, you get more productive as you don't have to do everything manually. Third, optimize your end-to-end -end development. As developers, we often think about the application code and how we put up our application together. But it's also important to think about what happens when the application is ready to be shipped to production. Four, embrace low-code wherever possible. Low-code helps you again to build more with writing less code. And five, limit added complexities added to your overall application stack that will later on just mean additional maintenance and overhead for you to keep up and running. Now let me dive in in all five of these categories and show you how Oracle can help you with simplifying your application development. Oracle Database comes with a raft of built-in functionality for you available at simple SQL function calls. Now what that means is that Oracle brings you over 100 built-in statistical and machine learning algorithms, over hundreds of spatial operators and functions, and over 50 additional analytical functions that you can run on your data directly. Now, it's not only important to have these algorithms available, of course, you have them available in many libraries and frameworks as well, but Oracle Database also optimizes these in real time and for petabytes of data. What that means is when you invoke an algorithm, Oracle has sophisticated technologies such as a cost-based optimizer to understand how to best access that data, whether or not to cache the data or if the data is already cached, whether or not to apply parallel execution to analyze this with the CPU power that you have available. And also most importantly and often neglected, concurrency controls and access controls so that when you analyze the data and somebody changes it underneath at the same time, you don't have to worry about that in your application. All of this is exposed via simple SQL calls or REST APIs, which means all of these are callable from any application that can just issue a SQL query, which is, of course, every application and every language out there. The beauty of this is if you leverage built-in functionalities, just like you already do with frameworks and libraries in the database as well, you can do more with less time and less code and you can rely on this functionality to also be run by thousands of other applications the same way as you do. So the likelihood that you get it wrong is simply not there because you're using something that's built in. Tools help us to be most productive in our day-to-day -day job. Now, often, of course, we speak about an IDE that we use to write our applications, but there's many tools around the Oracle database that also helps you with developing modern data-driven apps. It starts from the design phase to the administration. And of course, also testing and deployment is a super important aspect of modern development that you want to be able to gracefully introduce new functionality to an already existing application or gracefully bring users to a new version of the application. And last but not least, command line utilities help us to script our way around and of course, to make it easier for us to execute simple functions or simple calls well, just some scripts or manually if we have to. Optimizing the end-to-end -end development process is one of the most important aspects that we as developers often miss. Usually, as I said earlier, we focus a lot on writing the application and of course getting it to production. But what happens afterwards? Well, let's take a look. Of course, when we focus on the application code, 
We think, of course, about which programming language you want to write this in. We, of course, already usually know the programming language you want to write in, which frameworks to use, and what our build environment looks like. But what's next? How will the user actually interact with that application, and what is even a user? Do we need API calls that are specified for the application to be called? And how do we document them and make them available? Or do we send notifications and receive notifications? Or do we have a graphical interface? All of these things can be important during the time of designing and developing your application. If you miss some of them, you may have to go back and start over again once you realize that you have that need. So think about that. But it goes even further, right? The deployment method is something to consider as well. Like, how do you want to deploy this? Do you want to containerize it? Or do you want to load balance your application? And is your application geo-distributed? All of these things are really, really important to figure out how you want to write this application. If it has to run in parallel on a geo-distributed nature of everything being stateless, you have to factor that statelessness into the application. If you don't, you will not be able to accomplish that. And last but not least, equally important to, like all the others here, what's your upgrade path? Eventually, you will want to bring new functionality to your users or perhaps fix a minor bug. What will that look like? Right? Do you want to do blue-green deployment or do you want to run multiple versions of your applications at the same time? Or do you want to do an in-place upgrade of the application itself in real time without any outage? All of these things, again, are very important to consider during your design process so that these things don't come back later to bite you. Embrace low code wherever possible. Let's face it, not all code needs to be written. We leverage multiple frameworks and libraries already today and even built-in functionality in our programming languages so that we don't have to rewrite them. Low code tools and code generation tools help us to get better developer productivity because we can accomplish more by writing less. But it also means it helps the application security because generate the code is much less likely to have perhaps some oversight, a security hole or anything else in it. So it helps your application security, which in turn helps also your application stability. Now, not only for the code to be generated in real time does it mean that code is less likely perhaps to have less bugs because there's no human interaction per se there. But also think about when we're talking about applying the same code over a couple of gigabytes of data or a couple of terabytes of data. We're all very accustomed to just in-time compilation for many pro programming languages. And just like that can make decisions at runtime of what code to generate for best accommodating that workload. Code generation can also aim for making your application more stable by knowing what code to generate for 10 users, maybe 1,000 users for 2 gigabytes of data, maybe 500 terabytes of data. It's really important and it gives us a lot of these benefits. And of course, last but not least, it helps us with code maintenance because the less code we write, the less we have to maintain. Now, as said before, we're all very familiar with this already in development frameworks and visualization libraries. But there's a whole lot of analytics tools that, of course, also generate code and entire low-code platforms that allow you to build applications without having to write a lot of code. And not every application needs to be handwritten. So consider low code. Last is to limit the added complexities. Now, this is an important aspect that we have in development and we often kind of like until we don't anymore. What I mean by that is, well, let's look at the modern development stack, right? We may decide that our data comes in different formats or that we want to just manage and analyze the data in different formats, right? Uh, of course, we want to interact with the users or other applications via common methods out there. And usually, we would like to have always some kind of SQL-like analysis on top. Now, all of these capabilities, we have a raft of different technologies that we can choose from today. And they are all good in the things that they do, whether it's data management of different types of data or messaging and notification technologies, event sourcing technologies. And of course, many SQL-like languages have been written that allow you to analyze the data like it were SQL, but a slightly different. Now, let's take this in a holistic picture. If you have an Oracle database, 
because it follows the converged database methodology. A lot of these capabilities are built in. Storing and managing data in different data types are merely abstracted as data types in the Oracle database. You want to do messaging, notifications, event sourcing? Oracle Database provides you a technology called the transactional event queues that allows you to do exactly that in the database. And of course, nothing is better than to run SQL-like analytics than a SQL engine on top. Now, of course, there's no right or wrong here. Often it depends a lot on your requirements and what you are after. But often we think we have to bring a new technology, a new library, a new framework into the picture to accommodate just one use case when, in fact, we may don't have to. In fact, we may already have this capability in the technologies we use today. Now, in turn, you don't have to maintain that additional technology. You don't have to integrate with it in your application. You don't have to write the code for it, etc. So you get a lot of benefits just by leveraging what you already got and limit your added complexities. Now, next, I would like to talk about two customer examples that apply these key ingredients for application development simplicity. Our first customer is MindSense. MindSense is a pioneer in the intelligent digital mining that improves operational efficiency and sustainability. What MindSense does is they put sensors on their mining equipment to allow the mining operator in real time to determine the grade of the ore content that they have in their shovel. Now that in turn allows the mining operator to understand and make a decision whether it's worthwhile to further process that ore or perhaps not and just leave it there. That of course helps the sustainability and reduces the environmental impact because less ore has to be digged out to just find out later on in the stage that there is little in there that was worth processing. So it helps our planet and it helps the mining companies making smarter decisions. Now MindSense runs on Oracle Cloud and they adopt two ingredients that we have talked about before. They embrace low code, namely our Oracle Application of Express technology to interact with the mining operator on the machinery. And they limit their added complexities by running on the Oracle Cloud and most foremost because Apex is just a mere functionality of the Oracle Autonomous Database. So it comes for free out of the box and it makes perfect sense for them to use that. Our next customer is Retraced. Retraced redefines the way how we consume by providing access to honest information about the products around us. What Retrace does is they leverage blockchain technology that allows us to go into a store, look at a shirt, and know exactly where the cotton from the shirt was grown, all the way through the supply chain, all the way through all the different steps of the process. It is highly innovative and changes the way how we can make a decision what we want to buy or not. A Retrace also runs on Oracle Cloud. And they also adopt a couple of the application development simplicity ingredients we talked about. They leverage built-in functionality, such as JSON analysis inside the database itself. They use autonomous database, which allows them to store JSON and analyze it. They don't need a separate database for that. And they also rely heavily on our locking and concurrency mechanism. In fact, they don't have to think about that because the database provides that for them. So they don't have to think about any issues when multiple vendors uh, read the information and perhaps update it at the same time or provide multiple uh, the same information at the same time. The concurrency mechanisms will take care of that, which means they don't have in their application. They use tooling for the development and testing process amongst others, SQL, Oracle SQL developer, and they optimize their end-to-end -end development by leveraging the Oracle Cloud and the services that they bring, they don't have to figure out the runtime. Their microservices run on Oracle Kubernetes Engine. They have a load balancer in front so that they don't have to worry about where the traffic is coming from and to which microservice instance the traffic will be directed. And already mentioned before, they leverage the blockchain uh, cloud service and the Oracle Autonomous Database cloud services to provide this solution on a global sta scale to a supply chain for the clothing and fashion industry. They also limit their added complexities 
by storing, for example, JSON and relational data in the same database. Now, again, we already said that JSON, they store JSON so that they can analyze it, but by storing it alongside the relational data that they have as well, they don't have to integrate with two different technologies. They don't have to worry about to learn different skills for different technologies. It's for them, it's all the same technology that they use and that developers can reuse that's the skills that they have, as well as perhaps uh, libraries and frameworks that is already available for the technology. They also rely on the data tier online scalar capabilities. Oracle Autonomous Database is unique how it can scale fully online instantaneously, which means there is no brownout, no outage if you have to go to a bigger uh, shape, for, for example, because you have more workload that's currently driving the consumption of your CPUs on the database cloud service. Now, that aspect of it is nice because it means nothing has to be built in the application to go like, oh, do we have to consider whether the, app, uh, the database is scaling up with an outage, etc. No, it's not there because they know they can scale instantaneously. Now, to reiterate, there's five key ingredients that can help you make your application development process simpler. Leverage built-in functionality, use tooling, optimize the end-to-end -end development, embrace low-code, and limit your added complexities. In the following five sessions, we will dive deep on all of these areas. Thank you so much for attending Oracle Database World, and I hope you have a great day ahead of you. Thank you very much. Thank you.